This is Algebra 2, Chapter 6, Section 7, in which we will be solving radical equations. And we say and inequalities, but we're going to take that out for now and just deal with radical equations. So when we have variables underneath the radical in our equation, we have a game plan for how to solve it. We have a basic strategy that works. The first step is to get the radical isolated, get that square root thing or cube root thing or whatever it is by itself. Get it on one side and everything else away from it. Then step two is to raise each, pow each side to an appropriate power. If you're dealing with a square root, you square both sides. If it's a cube root, you cube both sides. If it's a seventh root, you would do a seventh power to both sides. Whatever root you're dealing with, that's the power you use. This is going to give you now an equation that doesn't have square roots left in it. You know how to solve those, so solve it. And then, once you've got that done, a lot of people miss this step and they get a lot of problems wrong because of it. You need to check for what's called an extraneous root. It's a root that does not work in the original equation. What happens when you start raising things to power? Sometimes you turn negative values into positive values. And you did all the algebra correctly, but your answer is still invalid because you've taken something that was false and then squared both sides and made it into a true statement. So you have to be careful here. You have to check your solutions. If you don't do step four, you're going to get things wrong. I promise you. You'll get away with it sometimes, but you will get problems wrong because you have false answers that you didn't bother to check. So let's solve a few equations here. In our first one, we have 5 equals to the square root of x minus 3 minus 1. We need to get that square root isolated. So that means we need to move the 1 over. I'm going to add 1 to both sides so that now my square root is alone. Since it's a square root, I square both sides. 6 squared is 36, and the square root of stuff squared is just the stuff. Well, now it's easy. Add 3 over, and we get x equal to 39. This is our candidate for a solution. It may or may not work. We have to test it and find out. So if x equals 39, we'll plug 39 back into the equation. And notice I went back to the original. If you go back to anywhere along the way, you might have already turned it, turned false to true. So you go back to the beginning. 39 minus 3 is 36. The square root of 36 is indeed 6. 6 minus 1 equals 5. Yep, sure does. So we give it the check mark to show that it worked. And 39 is a valid answer. Okay. Let's tangle with another one. We have a square root of x minus 4 plus 5 is equal to 2. Our job is to isolate that square root, get it alone, so let's subtract the 5 over. Now we can square both sides. Negative 3 squared is positive 9. If you did that on your calculator and you got negative 9, remember you want parentheses. And if you need help with that, just ask, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Add the 4 over, and we get x equal to 13. Okay. We have a candidate for a solution. Let's plug it back into the beginning and see if it's true. 13 squared to 13 minus 4. 13 minus 4 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. So we have a statement that 3 plus 5 is equal to 2. Not where I'm from, it's not. So we don't give it the check mark. 
because it wasn't correct. So this solution is a bad solution. We don't have any other candidates for what would be a solution. So nothing works. This problem would be no solution. Okay, if all of your candidates are bad, then that means there's no solution to the problem. Let's deal with one that has a higher than square root to deal with, like a fourth root. Okay. Same game plan applies. We need to get the radical isolated. So first thing we'll do is move the 6, and then we'll divide by the 3 to get it down to the fourth root of some stuff equals 2. Since it's a fourth root, I need to do a fourth power. The fourth power of the fourth root of stuff is stuff. And the fourth power on 2, 2 to the fourth power is 16 according to my calculator. Now it's an easy problem. Subtract 6, divide by 2. So now n is 5. If we have a candidate, let's take it back, plug it in, and see what happens. Okay. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 6 is 16. Okay. Simplifying this, this arithmetic, the fourth root of 16 according to my sheet from before, is 2. So I have 3 times 2 minus 6 is equal to 0. Well, 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 6 is 0. So yes, that's true. So n equals 5 is a valid solution. Okay. So our basic game plan always holds true. You want to isolate that radical then you want to use an appropriate power to get rid of the radical, solve what's left, and then check to make sure it's valid. Okay. If you had questions along the way, hopefully you jotted those down, bring them in to ask, and we will see you in class.